Now that it's fall, the temperatures are starting to get a little bit cooler at night, but I'm sure you still want to have color in your garden. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings, and today we're going to take a look at some annuals that are cold tolerant. So these are annuals that will give you that nice splash of color for the fall, but can handle some of the cooler temperatures that may come and go now that it's fall. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the selections that we have here at Garden Crossings. And then we're going to actually go out into the landscape and show you them in more of a landscape design or setting as well. First, we're going to actually look at the foliage color for the fall interest, and it's with the Artemisia Silver Bullet. So Artemisia Silver Bullet is kind of a nice, soft feeling annual. Silver shades and then a little bit of green going on as well. So it looks really great, not only in the landscape, but in container combinations as well. This is hardy in zones five to nine. So technically it is a perennial, although we use it all the time in our annual combinations. We're gonna take a look at it here. We have a nice pairing that we put together with the beautiful silver foliage there of the Artemisia Silver Bullet, along with Heuchera or Corabels. So Corabels are perennials, but they pair really nicely when you're creating your fall planters. I love that dark contrast of color. And then we also did incorporate in some pansies, which pansies are great for fall color, but also a lot of times they'll overwinter and bloom again for you in the spring. And pansies come in a very, very broad range of color. So there's certainly gonna be pansies that you can mix in with your container combinations to have a beautiful fall look. Superbells are another cold tolerant annual. They are hardy down to zone 30. So you can get a couple frosts if they're nice light light frost and they'll be fine. Once you get down to the 30 degrees is when you're going to start noticing that your super bells aren't going to look that great. The thing that's nice with super bells is they come in a vast array of colors. So there's really almost any color super bell that you can imagine that you can use in your fall plantings. One thing I will say about super bells is that we do tend to recommend super bells be planted in container combinations or in hanging baskets they don't do well if they're planted in the ground. They don't like to stay wet, and usually in the ground, the roots just seem to be wetter than what they like. So you're gonna have best results with planting super bells in containers and in hanging baskets. We've got an excellent container out in our landscape that is looking gorgeous right now, so I'm excited to show you that in just a few minutes. Lobularia Snow Princess is hardy down to 32 degrees. Snow Princess is a very dainty, fine flower that is excellent for borders or in containers. It's a nice spiller in a container and it's very fragrant. This is available in whites, there's light purples, so there's a couple different options with the Lobularia. And I'll tell you what, these did fantastic out in the landscape all summer and we're going to show you how they're holding up beautifully this fall. Nemesia are very cold tolerant. This one here is the Aromance Mulberry. They are tolerant down to 10 degrees. So if it gets cold, these guys are gonna hold on and continue to do well. That is an interesting thing with Nemesia is some of the old varieties of Nemesia, they did really well in the spring and then they did really well in the fall. But in the summer when it got really hot, they kind of started to just go to sleep, kind of go dormant a little bit. But with the new varieties of Nemesia, we are so excited because they bloom excellent spring through fall with this beautiful display of flowers. And oh, this one is so fragrant. I love the fragrance of Nemesia as you're walking through the garden or the landscape, or in this situation, when we're walking through the garden center, it's just, it overtakes you, the beautiful fragrance. I love the look of Selvia, especially in the fall landscape with its tall, upright spikes. This Selvia is the Rockin' Fuchsia, and it is hardy to 25 degrees. So another one that we can get, you know, a pretty decent frost and it's going to continue to flower until it just gets too cold for it. We're really excited to show you this out in the landscape. Um, we're going to show you Selvia. We're not going to show you Rock and Fuchsia, um, but we have some Selvia Unplugged So Blue right now in the landscape that is just unbelievable. Like if you are looking for a mass of color, the Selvia definitely is a great annual to give you that mass of color and you're gonna be surprised to see just how many butterflies were hanging out on it today. So we're gonna head out to the garden in just a moment and show you the salvia in its beautiful fall glory. Osteospermums, are African daisies, have these beautiful daisy looking flowers. They come in whites and oranges and yellows and pinks and purples. 
So a lot of variation of color. And they are hardy down to 25 degrees. So another pretty super hardy plant annual that we can put here in our landscapes to give us that beautiful fall color. We're actually gonna show you some osteospermums that we've used in our container combinations and some of our aqua pots and how they are looking this fall. Sedum lemon coral makes an excellent border plant, just a low growing succulent ground cover. And for some of you, this might even act as a perennial. It is hardy down to zone seven with a cold hardiness down to five degrees. So even us here in Michigan in our zone six garden, on occasion, we will see that our sedum lemon coral will overwinter if we have a fairly mild winter. I love the chartreuse green foliage and we're gonna show you in the landscape how we use it as we, we make a border or we frame in our sign as people are coming into the garden center. We're using this to just create an outline of all the beautiful sun patients we have in that garden. I often wish that purple fountain grass would be a perennial for us here in Michigan because I love the purple foliage that it has and then the beautiful rosy plumes. Although it's not a perennial, it can handle some of the cold here. Purple fountain grass is hardy down to 20 degrees. So even when we get nipped by frost, we're still gonna be able to enjoy this going into the winter. And I love the grass because it adds so much motion into the garden. This container combination that we put together actually has a lot of cold tolerant elements in it. We'll start off at the top with the Salvia Unplugged So Blue. Salvia Unplugged So Blue can handle the colder temperatures and it's also a pollinator magnet. I love how it acts as more of a thriller in this container, giving nice upright height and color. Next, we have a sweet potato vine medusa. Now, unfortunately, the medusa sweet potato vine is not going to handle cold temperatures well at all. We may be fortunate enough with this large canopy of the salvia that this may give it some protection from some light frosts or some just minorly cold temperatures, but the medusa sweet potato vine is gonna be the first thing that's gonna kind of peter out in this combination. Then we have the osteospermums that we talked about earlier. This here is a beautiful orange one with a really pretty purple center. And I love using osteospermums in container combinations because they just give kind of a, a sprinkle look of color. Obviously the sweet potato vine got very aggressive, so it did push some of those osteos out and to the side, but it just gives kind of a fun little character to this container. And at the bottom, we have Supertunia Mini Vista Hot Pink, which too is going to handle some of the cold temperatures when we get our first frost. Here's an example of a container combination where we use the Superbell's Pink Lemonade. So actually this combination also is a very cold tolerant mix. We've got the Salvia Rockin' Deep Purple. And the thing I like about Rockin' Deep Purple is even when you don't have the flowers, these calyx here, are still very vibrant and really pop up against the greens of the plant. And then of course we've got the Super Bells, the pink lemonade, which is beautiful with a pink and yellow shades together. I just love how on one plant you can have so many different kind of versions of color all mixed together. I think it actually helps give dimension. And then trailing down to the edge of this pot, we use the Dichondra Silver Falls, which is another cold tolerant annual. And I love the silver. It just is, it's so beautiful. Silver is like white. It's one of those colors that can be mixed with virtually anything and just make it look fantastic. As I'd mentioned, lemon coral sedum is an excellent border plant. And here we have it used bordering our hydrangeas. So this beautiful chartreuse green up against the whites and the pinks of the hydrangeas is really quite stunning. Now, as I mentioned, we may be fortunate enough that some of this may overwinter. Will we keep it in the landscape? Probably not because we're gonna wanna replant it and have this beautiful mass of color. But you may be one of those that is lucky enough that you'll be able to overwinter the lemon coral sedum and have this beautiful color year after year. I talk a lot about Alstroemeria or the Peruvian lily because I absolutely love that perennial. It's long blooming. It starts blooming end of May, beginning of June, and will bloom until we get a good hard frost. This particular one is part of the Inca series. Now we carry a ton of Peruvian lilies. Some of them are hardy down to zone six, 
but a lot like we're seeing here right now these are zone seven and eight hardy so although they typically would be grown as an annual here in michigan these have overwintered now for the third season so that's been um, really nice to be able to take something that's not really hardy in our zone and overwinter it they have these nice beautiful flower clusters and they continue to put flower clusters on all summer long you can use them as a cut flower if you'd like to take a little snip and bring it inside these flowers can last up to two weeks in a vase so definitely if you're looking for long blooming and something that it's going to take a good hard frost to kill off it would be the peruvian lily now these here planted under this baptisia or even planted under the hydrangea they're going to be protected so if we get a frost these plants are going to continue to go it's going to take something super cold to kill these off for the winter verbena is also a nice cold tolerant annual here we have the verbena meteor showers i always make sure we have a lot of verbena meteor showers planted out in our garden the reason why is they're an excellent plant for the butterflies it's unusual to not see butterflies on this plant they get fairly large about 30 to 36 inches tall and wide this is one plant here in front of us beautiful purple flowers it adds a little whimsy look to the garden and because of its nice tall flower spikes it also adds a gentle motion as well on occasion this plant will seed itself in our garden so that we end up with little seedlings in the spring that's not a guarantee that that's going to happen but it is nice to see there's a perfect pairing of two cold tolerant annuals planted together here we've used the lemon coral sedum as a border in this garden bed Lemon coral sedum is very low growing and it's got a beautiful chartreuse green coloration. Now here it's planted in full sun, so it's taking on a little bit more of the yellow color, where if we had it in part shade, it would be more that bright chartreuse green. We have it paired with the Lobularia snow princess, which is also another fantastic ground cover. Lobularia snow princess looks a lot like alyssum, but the difference is, is snow princess is sterile. It does not come from seed. So it continues to put on flowers all summer and all fall long. It's also a great plant for attracting pollinators and it's super fragrant. Now, not to be confused, we do have sun patients planted in this bed. These were excellent for our summer color, but once we get our first frost, these sun patients will turn black and we'll know that it got cold at night. If you are looking for some annual color for late in the season when the temperatures start to get cold, I sure hope that you are able to get some inspiration and ideas from today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.